clothes, hats, shoes. Gear is one of the best parts of the Splatoon series. There's a huge array of clothes to choose from to customize your character and make them feel unique. And like most things in Splatoon, gear serves the game's visual design, characterizes the Inklings and Octolings, and of course, contributes to the gameplay. On paper, gear in Splatoon is a great addition to the game that appeals to both casual fans and the core competitive audience. Unfortunately, it has some major issues that make it tedious, complicated, and difficult to use. Let's talk about it. The way I see it, Splatoon Gear struggles greatly with both accessibility and adaptability. First of all, accessibility. Getting gear in Splatoon is a grind. It can take multiple games to level up a single slot on a single piece of gear. Scrubbing or rerolling gear only gives a single chunk per sub ability, and the ability chunk prices to customize your gear scale higher and higher. There are so many barriers to entry that most players will be discouraged from engaging with the gear system at all. Even if they're interested in making gear, many people aren't willing to put in the hours it takes to make an effective set of gear. That means that most casual players, the people who don't put hundreds to thousands of hours into any game, the target audience of Splatoon, are not able to use one of the game's core multiplayer mechanics to any degree beyond accidental chance. Not to mention, most players don't know how to make gear. There are no guides in-game beyond basic descriptions of each ability, which are often misleading or even incomplete. Several abilities have hidden traits, such as bomb defense up protecting from explosions generated by special weapons, or last ditch effort partially activating in ranked modes depending on the enemy team's score. For a lot of weapons, main power up actually has multiple effects, but only one is listed. Splatoon has a problem in general with teaching players how to play the game. They do a pretty good job of laying out the basics, but if you want to get really good at the game, you're going to have to use external sources. And that's fine, but it would be really nice to at least show some numbers so we actually know what our gear is doing. Because honestly, I think a lot of people have the wrong idea. A lot of players seem to focus on making pures, where all three sub-abilities match the main ability on a piece of gear. But if you take a look at the competitive scene, you rarely see builds that look like this. Aside from a few exceptions, pures are normally not the way to go due to the way abilities stack. But really, it makes sense that people would believe this is the optimal strategy. The entire chunk system seems to encourage players to make pures. After all, placing the same sub-ability onto a piece of gear that already has that ability makes it more expensive. Honestly, I really don't understand this design decision. If stacking the same ability was somehow overpowered or really effective, it might make some sense. But Splatoon abilities have diminishing returns. Every sub-ability is not created equal, and if you stack all of the same thing onto a piece of gear, you'll be getting less out of each sub. There is no benefit gained from stacking these abilities on the same piece of gear instead of just spreading them out across all three gear pieces at lower ability chunk prices. So the chunk system raises prices for diminishing returns. That's literally reverse logic, it makes no sense at all, and it misleads players into believing the end goal of any piece of gear should be a pure, when in reality that's just a waste of time and resources. The other major problem with the gear system comes with adaptability. Balance patches may change the effectiveness of certain abilities or their usefulness in certain weapons. If it was easy to create new builds at any time, this would be great. Players would be encouraged to alter their past strategies and create new combinations of abilities to adapt their favorite weapons to the current meta or start playing new weapons with the best gear right away. Unfortunately, as things currently are, it's extremely difficult to keep gear up to date with the state of the game because it takes so long to earn chunks or roll gear randomly in the hope that you get one or two abilities you like, making builds can feel tedious and often pointless. By the time Splatoon 3 comes out, all about 2,000 hours in Splat 2, and I pretty much gave up on making builds after about 4 or 5. I have a decent amount of gear that's fully leveled, but without any real thought put into it, and some of the builds I do have are either outdated or just not that good because I didn't know what I was doing. It just stopped being fun to grind solo purely to get random abilities and pray to the RNG gods. Your own mileage may vary here, I'm sure there are people who like making gear more than me and are willing to put in the time and effort, but so many more players could benefit from the system being streamlined. Another part of this issue arises due to the fact that the cosmetics are forcefully tied to gameplay modifiers, because honestly a lot of players do design builds around the way the gear looks. Self-expression in video games can be fun and silly, but it's also an important part of Splatoon's appeal. People feel connected to their character and they want to be able to wear the gear they think looks best. The problem is, if you want a certain piece of gear with a specific main ability, you have to wait for it to appear in the shop on the mobile app? Nintendo, what the fuck? This is horrible. The selection in the shop is minuscule compared to the amount of gear pieces and main abilities in the game. Back when I actually paid attention to this shop, it literally took months to find some of the gear I liked with an ability I wanted. This system is ridiculous. Why can't we just spend chunks to change the main ability on a piece of gear? It wouldn't affect the balance of the game at all. It's not like we couldn't make a different hat with the exact same abilities. The one reason I imagine the developers did this is because some abilities only appear on hats, on shirts, or on shoes. 
This stops players from combining certain main abilities with specific traits, and is a restriction created for game balance. But they could just tell you that, and not allow you to put those abilities on the wrong type of clothing while still allowing the vast majority of main abilities to be customized. To me it feels like such an obvious flaw that would make a lot of players happy if changed. So alright, how would I change gear in Splatoon? Before anything else, tell players what the gear does. We need comprehensive descriptions that actually explain how the abilities work. Give us the details. In addition, why not give some tips? Maybe include a small list of recommended abilities above each weapon on the equip screen. This could help steer players in the right direction without telling them exactly what they should use. Now for the actual changes. To start, I'm not entirely against the luck-based system. I think grinding gear is a good incentive to play the game beyond increasing your rank and level, and it can be a lot of fun to create sets for certain weapons. But it takes way too long. First of all, leveling up gear. If you have an open ability slot, it should unlock after one game. No more of this EXP scaling based on star rating. One game. Next, no more scaling ability chunk prices. Every sub ability is the same price regardless of the other subs on the gear. Whether or not this price remains at 10 chunks, I'm not sure. I think 10 is an alright price, but I wouldn't complain if it was lower. Main abilities. Let us use chunks to change them. Maybe 30 chunks? Nothing crazy. But give the players agency. Don't make us wait forever to find good looking gear by chance. As far as re-rolling, please let us use coins to re-roll. In Splatoon 1, if you had no sea snails left, you could pay 30,000 coins instead to re-roll gear. For whatever reason, this option was removed in the second game, meaning coins become pretty much useless once you have all the gear and weapons. If we could spend coins on gear, money would have more of a purpose, and snails would still be important, as they would essentially be a 30,000 coin coupon. And lastly, let's talk about brands and drinks. The brand of the gear you wear in Splatoon influences the likelihood of getting a certain ability when you level up gear. This system is interesting, but really inconsistent. Drinks work in a somewhat similar way. They are purchased using tickets found in single player or earned from Salmon Run, and while active they increase the odds of getting a certain ability. My main annoyance with drinks is that they're active for 20 battles, but since you don't fully up level gear in every match, a lot of those uses are wasted. But with my previous gear leveling change, this is no longer an issue. One ability unlocked per battle. The real problem with brands and drinks is that they don't stack. These systems work independently of one another and not together. In addition to increasing their effectiveness, I would make it so that using both at once would be much more useful. I would make it so that each brand gives you a 50% chance of getting its respective ability, while using the brand and the respective drink should guarantee you get the ability you're after. This might sound a little too easy compared to the current system, but honestly, it should be this easy. Players should not be punished with artificial gameplay lengthening RNG systems when they're doing everything they can and using resources earned from every game mode. If someone plays enough multiplayer to earn money to buy gear of a specific brand, plays enough single player and salmon run to earn drink tickets, and plays in a splatfest to earn snails to upgrade their gear slots, they should absolutely not have to rely on luck to build the gear they want. Reward players for playing the game with abilities that make it more fun to play the game. This is how a gameplay loop should work. Guaranteed ability farming would encourage so many more people to actually put thought into their builds and be proud of the chunks they've earned. It would encourage players to experiment with different combinations and empower them to use the abilities they enjoy without the fear that they're putting their time and resources into something that might not pay off. And I'm not saying players can't make pures. There are a few cases where they're actually really good, like run speed on splatling builds. And of course, builds can just be fun. Mean builds like all quick super jump or special spam are funny, and not every build needs to be competitively viable as long as you have fun with it. But again, an easier gear system would benefit both casual and competitive players. If done right, gear is a fantastic way to reward players for engaging with every aspect of the game. It's a way for players to express themselves through customization and fashion as well as through gameplay by enhancing their own playstyle. I really hope the gear system in Splatoon 3 is something closer to what I've described here than how it currently is in Splatoon 2, but only time will tell. There are a lot of ways the gear system could be improved, so if you have any thoughts, let me know and comment below. There's a lot to talk about in the months leading up to Splatoon 3, and I've been having a lot of fun with these discussion style videos, so let me know if you'd like to see more of them. With that, this has been Cosmic. Thank you for watching.